Hey, what is up everyone? Norman from Future Studio University here. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day and welcome to another video in this Vetterfit series. In previous videos, we have shown you how you can send JSON or XML requests or even multi-port requests to upload files. In this video, we will keep it really simple and just send simple strings back and forth. You're not going to do any extensive parsing, so from Java objects to JSON, you're just going to use strings and primitive types. Now this involves sending them as a request and also receiving them as a response from the server. So let's jump into it. As always, you can find the content as tutorials on our website. It's the first link in the description below. The little app idea for this video is just going to be a message. So we can send a string message to the server and in the later part we will also receive a string message. So if you want to implement this, we need to start by describing the endpoint. You will do that as always in the user client class, or actually an interface. So let's call this method send message since we are sending a message. And we also know we're going to send a string. Now the return type for now is going to be the response party class. And since you're sending something, it's going to be a post request and the endpoint is simply going to be message. In previous videos, you have seen how you can use a body declaration to make sure a Java object gets passed as a request payload. This is always going to be the case, no matter if you're sending JSON or XML or just a plain text. So we're done on this part here. So let's jump into the activity and wire it up. I've already prepared the edit text, which is going to be passed once we click the button. Down here, we have the default retrofit um, setup. And now let's use the user client to call the send message method. And we're going to pass the message string. This is going to be our call. And you're probably sick of seeing this by now since I do that pretty much in any video. And let's just write a toast for now. So the message has arrived on the server. Or something didn't work out. Now let's execute this and see what happens. Okay, we're going to send the message. And I've added a breakpoint to our API. So let's see what arrived at the server. Now, as you can see here, we have the request object and the payload is just a string. So exactly what we wanted. What is a little weird up here is that the type of the request is in JSON. So why did that happen? Now, if we go back to our um, retrofit declaration up here, we add the converter for JSON. That means that every request we're sending is going to be converted by JSON. And by default, JSON sends JSON objects. So it's also going to change the type of that request to application JSON. This is not exactly what we want. Besides not having the correct MIME type, it also means that we're using JSON to parse just a simple string. And that's a little overkill. As a solution here, we can add the scalars converter to the project. Let's go into our build grader and add the scalars converter to our project. Now we can sync this baby. And once it's done syncing, we can add a new converter here. Okay, so let's add a new converter factory. And instead of JSON, you're just going to use the scalar converter factory and create. Now this video is not about converters, but just as the heads up, Retrofit is able to work with multiple converters. The order matters here. So it will try to convert it with the first one. If that one doesn't work, it will pass on to the second one. So in this case, it will try to parse the string with the scalars converter factory. If that works, it will just use that for the request. Since we know that the scalars converter factory can deal with strings, we can leave it like this. What we also could do is just remove this one 
But then if we pass like a full object, Retrofit would uh, throw an exception because it doesn't have any converters to deal with that kind of object. So you have to decide depending on your use case what's correct for you. Since we're just going to use strings here, I will leave it like this and not add the JSON factory. So if we repeat this thing and leave everything the same, we should get a result we like. Okay, it applied the changes. Let's send that message again, but add in again here and click the button and step through our backend. So back here we had the MIME title of application JSON and hopefully now it should be the plain text one. And there we go, text plain. And the payload is also the same, so everything worked as we expected. So in the second part, I want to show you how we can also apply the same logic to the response of the server. So if we go back to our endpoint declaration, here we've used the general response body class. You could access a body here, and since it's just a string, it's pretty easy to access. But just for the sake of completeness, you could make this call a string type. And then we have to change, um, obviously, our call here. And also our callbacks. Let me just copy and paste this really quick. And this should be everything. And let's also access that response. Now, since the body is a string directly, we should be able to just show that in a toast message. Okay, let's add a message. And we see a response from the server, which is simply this worked. Now, this is one way of doing it. You can use the scalar converter to send strings or integers or any other primitive type. The second way I want to show you is to create a request body directly. So let's take this part out here. And we're going to add a second endpoint declaration. Instead of sending a string, we're just going to use the common request body class. Now, obviously, we have to change our code in our activity since we now want to pass the um, request body. So let's create that request body. You can create a request body with the static create method. First, you have to add the media type, which we're just going to parse. You can use the media type parse function for that. And we are going to stay the same, so we're just going to use the text plain one. The second is the content of that request body. And in this case, it's just the message object. Now, obviously, instead of sending the message, we're going to pass as a request body. And if we jump into this endpoint declaration, we end up here. Let's see what the result of this approach is. And it didn't focus right, so let's send the message. And I added the breakpoint again, so hopefully, you will get the response here. Here we see it. We also have the correct MIME type now. Everything works the same way as with the scalar converter, but now we have created our own custom request body. And obviously you can do a lot more when you create your own request body and not rely on the converters. However, the converters do a lot of work for you. So I would always try to get it done with the converters first before you do too much manual work. Anyway, this was it for this video. So let's review what you have learned. In this video, you have seen how you can use the scalars converter to send and receive plain text messages. You have also seen a short introduction in how you can create your own request body and use that to send requests to the server. Either way works well to send plain text request bodies. Thanks for watching, like this video if you've learned something, and please subscribe if you want to see more videos in this series. Enjoy coding and make it work.